Boy, what a unique case we're talking about on It's the Law tonight. Attorney Day Davis, Jay Davis, is here from James W. Davis and Associates. Your client, Jay. My client, my case. Your case. We're making the news. <laughs> we sure <laughs> are. Going all the way to the Georgia Supreme Court in the case of Jadarius Meadows, tried right. for murder, in court for murder in 2015. The judge called a mistrial back in 2015 when you were representing that client. Why did he first call the mistrial? The judge called the mistrial because of safety of the jurors. He, in his mind, he was concerned about the safety of the jurors. And as we were talking a little bit ago, the judge is entitled to great deference. Mm -hmm. So if the prosecution actually asks for a mistrial, they're, they're sh strict scrutiny by the court to say, you look, you've got to really prove a case for a mistrial if the prosecution is getting a mistrial. But if the court calls it for a necessity, it's just needed, then the, the court is given great deference. And the court felt like, um, there was a juror that had left the court earlier that had requested to, to leave that her leaving mm -hmm. combined with the jury itself saying we're not some of them saying we're making progress some of them saying we're not making progress there wasn't that and then apparently a bailiff went into the judge's chambers and said that it's so hostile they in there so I think hostile. I'm going to that's yeah that's the bailiff's interpretation of it so the judge said in light of all of these circumstances, what we call totality of the circumstances, the judge felt that this was enough to call the mistrial. Mm -hmm. And we said no. And we believed, in a lot, you know, I see headlines of accused killer release and all that kind of stuff, but what we actually believe is Jadarius Meadows would have gone home that day yeah. had the jury been allowed to continue. There was a likelihood. We knew, we believed that, that this was going towards a not guilty. It mm -hmm. was somewhere around 10 to 2, not guilty. We believed it. You can tell by what our answers were to the judge. The prosecution apparently believed it based on them wanting the mistrial to go forward. Right. So we believed that we, we knew where it was going, and we said this isn't enough. This, this concern is not enough. So the, judge, the trial judge says, we're going we're gonna to try this case again. You say, no, that would be double jeopardy. Exactly. That's why it goes to the state's Supreme And you know Court. I'm all about the Constitution. Let's you get sure our are. rights in there. You sure I'm are. like, this is double jeopardy. I don't know. And the truth is, is that safety of a juror, there's no good case law that we found or that the prosecution found yeah. on how to treat a safety concern for the jurors. But what we said was, you have to at least ask the jury if they're safe. That's mm -hmm. got to be the minimum starting point. Mm -hmm. You can't look at surrounding circumstances. The juror that left is not a part of the 12, so what she said is not even important. You, and, and jurors all the time have disagreements as to what's going on. Right. And a bailiff, if you allow that to stand for a bailiff standing outside a jury room to have some impact on whether that goes forward, there is no telling. We're not, we're not suggesting there's any impropriety in this particular case, but that, if that was left as a law and what could happen, we just believe that that would not be tenable in this state. It could not be the policy. Yes. You argue in front of the Supreme Court in February. February 5th. You got the ruling Monday, Jay. Tell us how it went. It went in your favor. It went in our favor. Big time. Judges, 100% of the justices concur on the Supreme Court. This was all justices concur. Um, the, there has to be something else. It didn't lay out. We were expecting a little bit of laying out the precedents. If there is, when there are other concerns or other cases where people are, uh, ju juries are dismissed, there is now case law. We are the case law now for mm -hmm. how that may be decided, at least apart. Wow. They didn't get clear on what was required, but they got clear that this was not enough. Mm -hmm. Jadarius Meadows, they will say he can get out of jail. He spent what, like almost the, over? The, spent, the he, order says for him to get out uh, immediately upon return. He's been in there a year and a half-ish? He's been in there, the total, it's a little bit hard to calculate because he did get out right after this on a bond for a period of time for a little over a year. So he hasn't been in jail the entire time. Okay. But a part of what led up to this was our bond motion to try to, he'd been in a year and a half and they weren't trying him. Mm -hmm. So um, part of it led to that and then he got out for a period of time, subsequently was returned back to, to jail on some things that are unrelated, um, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that are not still pending. Those things are all, those things are resolved at this point. Yeah, we're going to keep talking about this with Jay. Certainly not, we're going to go get our last look at our weather now, but check out our website here either tonight or tomorrow. We're going to keep Jay around for a more in-depth discussion on this case. Appreciate you, Jay. Thanks.